Before we get started, I want to let you know that I have a second channel that I started recently called Bloom, where I talk about interesting stuff such as will the economy collapse because of this virus? When exactly this pandemic is going to end? Why the stock market is rising when the country is in a recession? Or even things such as what are the Tesla's five next big products? Some fascinating facts about World War II and a lot of other interesting stuff. There are already a lot of videos you can watch right now. So head to the channel by clicking in the link in the description and subscribe. Last week was pretty rough for the stock market. When everyone thought that these stocks are going to grow forever, major tech stocks completely collapsed and experienced a drop day after day. Apple, Google, Tesla, every stock is pretty much down. And that's not by accident. The stock market has been overvalued for the last few months, since the stock market has been rising like there is no tomorrow. And when the stock market is at its peak, what do you do? Sell. And that's what has been happening recently. At the beginning of August, Bezos first sold over $3 billion of Amazon stocks. At the end of August, Tim Cook sold $131.7 million of Apple stocks since it probably won't cross the $2 trillion mark at least in the coming year or two. On September the 1st, Tesla announced that it would raise $5 billion by selling stocks from time to time. But it seems like that time wasn't long. By September 4th, within three days, they sold off everything and raised $5 billion. It seems like Musk also thinks that the price was at all times high. And that's one reason why the stock market has been falling. The demand and supply usually set the price. Since the beginning of the pandemic, there has been a lot of uncertainty about the future. But what we know for sure is that we need to practice social distancing and a lot of jobs are going to be from home. Automation is going to accelerate. In other words, technology is basically the future. So investors had to keep their wealth somewhere safe and most importantly, somewhere where it would continue to grow despite the pandemic. And tech companies seemed like the best option besides gold. That's why gold prices and tech companies grew exponentially since there was much more cash chasing limited amount of stocks. Hence, prices rose dramatically. Once early investors realized that prices are significantly overvalued, they decided to sell and rip off the profits as would any other rational investor. And one of the problems with the market is that most investors are not rational. In the past, you had to study finance, understand financial statements, and make reasonable financial decisions. Today, you can buy stocks with a few clicks on your smartphone. So, if you're seeing in the news that Apple, Tesla, or Amazon stock is growing dramatically, why not take the ride with them and also get rich quickly? And when the market starts falling, people panic and start selling to minimize losses, which drives prices down. Take Apple, for example. Just in December of last year, its price to earnings ratio was 17.7 which means for every dollar you invest, it will take the company 17.7 .7 years to pay back the amount you paid for each share. Since the industry average is 15, Apple was quite a good investment back then. But then suddenly, in less than a year, its P-E ratio jumps to almost 40, when its earnings were pretty much the same as the last year. Of course, price to earnings ratio isn't the most accurate way to value a company since it uses company's earnings for the last 12 months. So, let's take a look at its forward P ratio. How much experts predict the company is going to earn? Last year, it was little over 22. Since its price to earnings ratio has more than doubled, its forward PE ratio should have a swell, right? Not really. It jumped slightly to 28 as of September 2020, which is another indicator that the stock price is probably overvalued. That's why it has fallen to 34 at the time of writing the script and would probably keep falling to around 20. Of course, relying on some ratios to judge the market isn't the most accurate method, 
but it's not just Apple, but Tesla, Amazon, Google and others. However, not the entire market is overvalued. Many companies haven't recovered to their pre-pandemic levels yet. It's only the tech companies that surge dramatically. So the question is, will the market crash again? The United States handled COVID-19 terribly. Cases might have dropped to 30 or 40,000 a day, but that's still significantly high. And as we approach the winter, experts are warning that cases might spike again. On top of that, taking into account that the election is coming, you have a perfect recipe for another market crash. Elections create uncertainty, which means investors don't know what's going to happen. Regardless of which candidate do you support, we have to put the facts on the table. If Trump gets re-elected, we will have massive protests, which will also increase COVID-19 cases and will create more uncertainty. And if Biden gets elected, then corporate taxes or even capital gain taxes would probably spike, which means fewer earnings for the companies and investors, which means stock prices would drop. But that doesn't mean that the market will crash as it did back in March. Only time will tell. But what we know for sure is that the Fed is trying to do everything possible to keep the economy stable because that's the job of the Fed. If the economy is rising too fast, it raises interest rates, for example, to slow it down. When the market is falling dramatically, then the Fed steps in to flood the market with cash to make the crisis a little less painful. And that's what happened back in March. The Fed lowered interest rates to almost zero, issued stimulus checks, started buying corporate debt. It basically used every weapon in its arsenal to prevent the economy sliding into a recession. The economy still went into a recession, but the stock market grew exponentially since the Fed made it clear that it's going to do everything possible to keep it stable. However, that can't continue. At some point, investors are going to realize that prices are inflated and the bubble would burst. The Fed is trying to keep the economy stable until a vaccine is available so that everyone will get back to work and the economy keeps growing as it has been prior to that. According to Bill Gates, who has long ago predicted this pandemic and heavily invested in top six companies working on a vaccine, a vaccine for COVID-19 will most likely be ready by the beginning of 2021. So we are pretty close to it. To what extent the market is going to crash in the next few months? No one really knows. But the main question is, should you sell or hold? If you're a long-term investor, you probably shouldn't care about what's happening in the market because the market is always volatile. It's just sometimes a bit more volatile than other times. If you're an ETF investor, you probably know that because most of these ETFs just recently recovered to their pre-pandemic levels. As the election is going to create uncertainty, the market might dip a little bit, maybe more, but at the end of the day, it will bounce back to what it really worth. For the last 10 years, the market has been growing tremendously and the Fed did a pretty good job at keeping it growing. It was the longest economic expansion in the history of the United States. I personally won't be selling anything because I'm a long-term investor, especially the investments I have made this year because I will have to pay a high capital gain tax. So I would rather just keep my investments. But at the same time, I probably won't go heavy on any stock until after the election if stocks bounce back to what they really worth. Then I'm all in. If not, waiting for a little more would probably be a wiser option. And now it's your turn to tell me if you're investing now or not. Do you agree with me that we are in a bubble? And which stocks are you going to buy when the bubble bursts? Let me know in the comments below. And as usual, give this video a thumbs up if you have enjoyed it. And if you're new around here, then subscribe and turn on your notifications. Thanks guys for watching and until next time.